Yeah. Flynn, how did you feel about the finished product? <clears throat> well, uh, I, I mean, at that, I, mean I, you know, I had no objectivity whatsoever. You know, I, well, I'd yeah, done 300,000 versions of the draft uh, of the script, and I'd been in the recording sessions, and I'd gone over the boards. Though I was not a really reliable board guy, but I did, I did do that. I was a producer, I, you know. Um, and you know, I, I, I think I'd seen a couple cuts of it before, before the final. Uh, you know, and by the time, I, I mean, my, my biggest reaction, I remember was, and I've had, what, uh, what I'll say about that film that's interesting is every time I've seen it, I've only, probably only seen it five times since, you know, since I did it, was I remember my reaction the first night, well, when I went to the screening, there's this guy sitting behind me, since we're like, we've already crossed the line into harsh language here in this. This guy sitting behind me, you know, shit, God, you know, I'm just hearing this like cursing, like from somebody behind me here. And it was I'm Wally going, Burr. I, I, yeah, <laughs> and, you know, and I'm going, okay, fine, we didn't hit Citizen Kane, but it's not that bad, okay? And I'm and this is a cast and screw crew screening, so this isn't like just some random guy off the street, right? And, uh, and, and, and I was kind of a little afraid. This guy was really upset. And this tells you everything you need to know about being in the, in the movie business. And that is, um, so I get up at the end, and you know, I kind of look over to see who the guy is, and the, and the guy sticks his hand out. He says, hey, Flint, we've never actually met, but I'm, and I can't remember the guy's name, but you know, I'm Scott, I was in, uh, you know, over at Paramount, I was a Dolby B guy, because we'd go in and listening to sweeten sessions, sweetening sessions of, of the movies. And that's the final pass on the sound where you make sure the effects are all mixed right and you hear it, but you're hearing it in a giant, you know, screening room at a, at a studio. And that was even for the TV shows. You're not hearing it in a real TV environment. But anyway, there are guys up in the booth and I just tell them what I thought, you know, as if, you know, I felt kind of silly. I mean, these are professional sound guys and I'm some goofball producer sitting there. But nevertheless, I would. And so the guy knew me very well, but I'd probably never actually seen him. And to him, the whole issue, so he says, you hear the Dolby B? Did you hear the B track Dolby <laughs> on that thing? They, they, they screwed it up. They screwed up the transfer. It sounded like crap. Okay, to him, and this is the, all you need to know about the movie business or probably any other business. To him, that entire movie was the B track Dolby. Okay, to me, it's all the script. You know, and I'm not seeing a real movie. I'm sure Nelson was only seeing the colors and the animation. And, and all that, I mean, is, you know, that's what I saw. And it, I probably really didn't see the movie, uh, you know, objectively. I mean, I didn't watch it between then and when I did the commentary on the, on the 25th anniversary edition. Or was it 20th anniversary? Yeah, a, a, long a long time ago, a long time ago. 30's coming edition. up, by the way. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I just did the interview yes, yes, for right. uh, the Blu-ray. Put your teeth in. Put your yeah, teeth I, in. I mean, you realize just, you know, like I, I, I was a kid when I was doing this stuff. Um, yeah, we all were. Good. We had, yeah. like I had, I had like brown hair and stuff. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, but what happened? So we're sitting there in the, uh, uh, you know, and then I watched it again the night before we did the we did the the audio track, and 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 I was, as I was saying, and then I'll I'll, I'll stop I'll stop talking. But it's kind of interesting because you guys seem to be interested in this stuff. Is when I saw it the first time, I, I was kind of relieved at how good it was. Then I saw it again when I was commenting on it. And I'm sitting there with Nelson and Sue Blue, and we're talking about it. And I'm realizing, wow, this really does wire together. And like Nelson was explaining stuff that to, in order to tell that story, there's such a complex set of, of visual and artistic decisions they had to make that I didn't even think about. Okay, I'm writing a script and it says ashtray, you know, has this line on the script. And I don't think that I have to light ashtray a certain way so you know he's a good guy and you know, or the dipstick, you know, has to, you know, move a certain way. I'm not thinking about that, okay? And I realized how complex it was. Then I saw it over at Cine, at Cinegrill, right? Mm -hmm. Cinegrill is this bar where they screen movies. But I mean, if this is in Hollywood and it's like a, basically, a, you know, imagine a professional screening room, but you know, with great sound and everything, but it's a bar. And watching that and the soundtracks blurring into your comment about the soundtrack, if you want to feel, know what the 80s felt like, it is the Transformers soundtrack. Absolutely. That time I viewed it, I was 100% struck by the 80s-ness. And, and, and I don't know, anybody actually lived during the 80s? We want the 80s back. <laughs> And the animation is told the 80s as well. Yeah, and then I was sitting there. Well, I, I, I'll do one last thing I'll show. <laughs> then I was sitting there at, at uh, the Egyptian Theater. They did a screening of it. And I was doing it as, you know, as, as 
kind of a thing, but we're, I'm also working on a game called Ingress, uh, as I do is, is um, real world games now. And um, so we had like Ingress fans show up for it, and uh, as well as Transformer people, and I was just kind of crossing over the two. And, yeah, and um, I was watching it, and I was struck by a sense, and I was sitting there with a guy I was writing a graphic novel with at the time, a guy named Chris Metzen, who's uh, uh, creative uh, head of Blizzard. And, and we're sitting there watching, and I'm, and I'm watching this film, and I'm thinking, this feels like an art film. I'm looking at this elaborate stuff when, when you know, Unicron's opening up, and I, you know, at this point, I'm almost like personally utterly divorced from it, and I'm actually just seeing a film. And, I, and it was striking me, as, this, this is like an art film. So, point is, when you see a film a lot of time over a lot of decades, you, it, it is a different experience every time that you encounter it. That's Thank you. Thanks. That's awesome.